pretty active already. And so I hope that we can step it up and take it to the next level in our community. Um, while you're eating, I know you're holding your plate with one hand and you're eating with the other hand, but I'm gonna ask you to raise your third hand um, when I ask you a couple of questions. So raise your hand or stand up or something. Show us if you have been to other, so have you been to more than one soil series? Great, all right. Has, is there anyone here ha that has not been to any of the soil series? Okay, good to know. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you all a little bit about the soil series uh, for those of you that haven't been here. We have had six events uh, from February through May 10th was our last, no, that's two days from now, we didn't do that yet. Um, <laughs> April 24th, yeah, it's been a long run. Uh, six events, and each event uh, was packed with three speakers and then a go-round. We never really had a lot of time for community discussion, and the feedback that we got that it was that people wanted community discussion, so that's why we planned this event. The six events were, um, one was about human health uh, and soil health, public health. One was about building soil or covering soil from, from the ground. Yeah covering bare soil. One was about water and cooling the planet. One was about storytelling uh, and specifically talking about soil related stuff, but using story um, as a way to, to tell our stories and to get points across. Um, another one, I should have the flyer in front of me. What am I missing? Social mycelium. Yes, the social mycelium. That was all about community resilience. Uh, and then I taught one was um, building soil from the ground up. That's right, building soil from the ground up. And that was all about building soil and also about mycelium. Um, so we had, we had 19 speakers, I think, um, through this whole series. We had 23 sponsors that put up uh, some funding and did a lot of outreach to help us put the series together. Black Crim provided food for us at a discounted rate. The whole series was put together um, by myself representing Vermont Healthy Soils Coalition and Chris Wood representing Bale, building a local economy. I am Kat Buxton, I am so sorry, thank you. Yes, my name is Kat Buxton. <laughs> and I live in Sharon, Vermont. And uh, I co-founded the Vermont Healthy Soils Coalition after I went to a three-day workshop with Dee Dee Pursehouse, who's sitting right over here. Uh, and she brought to town a gentleman named Walter Yana, who's an Australian climate scientist and microbiologist. And um, I learned so much there, uh, and it really helped to shift the way I think about things, uh, as has my ongoing work with Dee Dee uh, and Peter and the Soil Carbon Coalition. And um, I was encouraged at that event, as we all were, to think bold, think boldly act boldly. And um, one of the things that came out of that group was, well, what, what if we rehydrate California? Which seemed like a pretty bold thing, uh, which by the way, is happening. It's, there is a group doing that, and Dee's involved. Um, but I thought, well, I live in Vermont, and I don't really like it when people come to my town and tell me how to do things, and I'm not a Californian, and I don't know about living in dry climate, so why don't we do something in Vermont? How do we, how do we soak up all the water in Vermont is kind of what I thought. So, um, because that's what we we're getting. All the climate projections say that we're just gonna continue getting more and more rain uh, in larger volumes. Um, and we know what, what happens when we get a lot of rain. We, we lose our roads, we lose our topsoil, we lose so much, and it starts to break down our communities. Um, and so, the soil series was designed from um, feedback. Basically, people want to know more. Uh, we have a Vermont Healthy Soils Coalition listserv where I get a lot of information from our members. If you want to join that listserv, we have a little handout on the table there. You can just go to our website, take the survey, follow the email instructions to join our listserv. I've gathered from being on that listserv for uh, a couple of years, we've had that going now, that there are a lot of questions that people want to learn a lot more, people want to connect with each other, and we have incredible expertise all over our states, in every community, 
there's so much expertise right in this room. And so I thought we need to build our social mycelium. I, I like to think of learning from nature. Our greatest teacher is nature. And the more I get to know humans, <laughs> the less I want to learn from humans and the more I want to learn from nature, quite honestly. Um, because we really haven't done a good job. We've done brilliant things, and, and we'll do more brilliant things. Um, but I really find that, that nature uh, holds the answers that we seem to miss and walk right over. Um, and so I'm hoping that this event tonight, this is funny, I don't even know. Without it? I'm sitting down here. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not, you can hear me over there? Yeah. All right, if you, when you get this, if you're quiet, please use it, and you might have to like, move the button back and forth and shake it around. <laughs> That's how you make it work. It's the real deal. Yeah, don't hit your head with it. <laughs> That's what Henry was saying. Um, so, um, the soil series was designed to try and help us understand the, significant, the significance of soil for human health, for public health, for climate health, for soul health, to connect us with the planet that feeds us. It connects to every single thing I think that we need. We need soil. We can't do anything without healthy soil. And globally, we are losing soil very, very fast. 40% of our agricultural land globally is either degraded or severely degraded, and in some cases even have, has been turned to desert where it didn't used to be. And as we create more and more bare soil around the globe, it is absolutely affecting water cycles. Um, and so there's a lot to learn, and I can't clearly go into that detail. It took us six series to get to this point and barely cover a lot of those topics. So what we learned from you is that you were very interested in all of those topics and that you wanted to learn more. We also learned that you want to have small group discussions. We also learned that a lot of people struggle with how do I talk about this? How do I talk about this to people who don't know about it? How do I talk to my town manager, my legislator, the public works department, my cousin, whatever it is? Um, so we're hoping that this event is gonna help us to do that. We're gonna start by a quick go round. And there's a lot of us here. We all have a lot to say. We're gonna have an hour in small group discussions. So as we do our go round, I'd like us to each just take one minute we're timing you, <laughs> and we have, when we hold up a yellow piece of paper, who wants, can someone be, who wants to be our timer? You'll do it? All right, Chris is a timer. When he holds up a yellow piece of paper, that means, hurry up. When he holds up the red piece of paper. You're all done. Or, or pink. You're all done. You're all done. So if it's red or pink, you're all done. And it's not because we don't love you, and it's not because we don't want to hear what you want to say, but we want to try and get through this event uh, and there will be more. I think that's one of the outcomes we'll find, is that there will be more. So when we uh, go around in a circle, now I have to look at the notes. When we go around in a circle, we are going to say our name, where we are from, one reason that you're here tonight, and what is the best outcome for this meeting tonight, according to you. So I'll start. My name is Kat Buxton. I am from Sharon, Vermont. Um, I am here tonight because you all asked me to do this, and I'm delighted to do it. Um, and I want connection. And the best outcome for this meeting for me tonight would be that we stay connected and that we advance all of the work that we're doing in a cohesive manner. I'm from Dee Dee Pursehouse from Deptford Center, Vermont. Um, I'm here to connect with all of you, uh, partly because I only got to go to the first part of this series and I was so excited to see that there were so many people coming. Uh, and best outcome for this meeting. Uh, I'm really excited in this topic about writing and communicating about this. And so I'm interested in connecting with those folks. 
for those things to go. Uh, uh, my name is Henry Harris. I live in Marshfield. Um, and I'm here, I'm just, I think I've gauged like the responsiveness that Kat and, and Chris are getting from the greater community. And it seems like there's a lot of enthusiasm and possibly something will happen. Um, which leads to the best outcome and opportunity for us to scale up big projects to for the soil and climate uh, as we're launching beyond. Thanks. We're safe. Nice. My name is Graham Yunang Strubinok. I live in Plainfield. Um, one reason I'm here tonight is because I'm sort of passionate about these topics and think they have a lot of potential to. Um, be an opportunity for so many people to um, engage with life in a productive, meaningful way with one another, and also approach a number of the issues that we're facing locally and globally. Um, the best outcome, I, I think a lot of what Henry said is, is what I'd be hoping for, you know, spreading information in a way that we can scale up strategically and effectively to achieve what we want and to say no to what we don't want. Hi. Uh, I'm Bradley. I just moved to Vermont about a week and a half ago from Copenhagen. Uh, I'm an agronomist and I'm working with the Rich Earth Institute in Brattleboro. And just looking to plug into find out what's going on here and get plugged in. Um, can you hear me without the thing? No. 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 <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> Switch it back and forth a bunch. You're on. Yeah, on. Can we sit? You're on. like that old vending machine. I don't think you are on. on. I'm just going to try to speak up. So I'm Tatjana. Um, I live in West Worcester West. And um, here, um, because I've really been I've really been thinking a lot about the um, issue of collective doing things for the collective good versus the sort of entrenched feeling that a lot of people have that they shouldn't, their rights shouldn't be infringed on, they should be able to do whatever they want on their land, you know, in terms of land management. So I'm excited about the idea of having some small group discussions because it seems to me that that's where we can maybe strategize some ideas uh, of bridging those. And the outcome for me would be to um, Here's some success stories that people have had. Okay, I'm uh, Marilyn Fiorello. I live in Brattleboro. Um, one, well, it's a double reason. I've been wanting to come, but for the whole series, but it, it's just a long ride, especially if I have to do it alone. But I came tonight because I had two passengers in my car, so that was wonderful, and I got here. Um, the best outcome for this meeting is, for me, I always I've been a lifelong learner. I want to learn something new, and I want to be able to help build this movement because I really think we're on the right track. Um, my name is Stephen Hyde. I used to, work with, used to work with Chris years ago at Robobon, and I now work for an investment management company in Boston does sustainable investing. My interest in coming tonight is to learn more about the topic, to bring it to investors and large corporations about how to, uh, I guess, as part of the whole package for addressing the climate change and sustainability. And my main uh, outcome I'd like to see is for my own self, or selfishly, to make a connection with people here to learn more and to to put them together to keep the coming next Hi, I'm Henry Swayze uh, from Tunbridge and um, on the steering committee of the Vermont Healthy Soils Coalition. And like Kat, I attended uh, Didi's uh, three-day workshop with Walter Vienna and that converted my thinking 
that in order to solve the world's problems, uh, I, I shifted from thinking we had to sequester carbon to thinking we actually had to cool. And it turns out that all the things you do to build soil also cool. So it's a nice round robin. You can attack it from any level you want. The best outcome for me this meeting is to see uh, groups of people working together to mobilize and really make some massive action happen because that's what's necessary if we're actually going to turn the thermostat off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm Karen Bissler from East Bethel and I'm here because I'm just really enjoying this whole series and it's probably the best part of it, what comes out of it. And I'm sure whatever comes out tonight is going to be the best outcome. <laughs> Hi, I'm um, Mark Kelly from East Randolph. Um, I come here because uh, I learn and, uh, and I've, I've been able to apply these lessons to um, my own farm. And um, the best outcome for me would be if this whole group were to coalesce around one action which could be brought to successful fruition. Mm -hmm. I'm Gary Durr. <coughs> uh, there were four things that I was responsible to speak to you about. Uh, I'm really good at what I did when I was four years old, but I can't remember what happened five minutes ago. <laughs> so I want to get this group connected with these R3 groups. Uh, we have a task leaders group that's led by Pat Moulton from BTC. And I want to get a couple representatives this summer to join us and tell the task leaders what we want to do. Um, and I would like to join a group that identifies what we talk about. Speakers this for the next year. Uh, my name is Keith Walsh. I live in Bedford Center, Vermont. Uh, one reason for being here tonight is I, I really kind of came with the intention of being cheery or positive. So just keeping in mind that even though we face what seem to be staggering, momentous issues in front of us, I really firmly believe that not just our positive thinking, but also the positive thinking of Mother Nature is going to push us to that point. So don't lose the faith first of all. Second of all, the, uh, the best outcome for this meeting uh, is that we do remain connected and that, and that we put our intentions uh, to work. My name is Carl Tiedemann. I'm co-founder of the Soil for Climate group. One of the reasons I'm here tonight is to, uh, to make sure people are uh, aware of the group. Um, on Facebook, we have over 11,000 members from more than 100 countries. So if this is a topic you're interested in staying current on, um, uh, I invite all of you to, uh, to join, those of you who haven't. Uh, and the best outcome for this meeting is uh, Getting everybody to sing happy birthday for my friend Seth, who's over there, the co-founder of Soil for Climate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best out of the Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Seth. Happy birthday to you. Oh, we made one minute. Well, accomplished, so we can go now. <laughs> Any other birthday people today? <laughs> uh, my name's Annie McClary. I live in Woodbury. Um, I didn't make the rest of the series, and I'm here because mud season is actually over now in Woodbury, so I can get down the road, and it's light enough so I come out at night now. And um, I really appreciated what happened in this circle just this moment. We started all over the place with our tones for happy birthday. 
And by the end of that short little series, we all were singing quite harmoniously. So um, we'll take that as a model for the evening. And uh, I think a wonderful outcome would be that everyone goes home feeling the connectivity, feeling closer, more uh, closely uh, connected in the web of life with not only the humans, but with all beings. My name is Jael. I'm a farmer in Worcester, Vermont. I also um, am the field organizer for the Vermont, or 350 Vermont Solutions Campaign. And I'm here because I feel like this is one of, or the most incredible solution to addressing climate change and many of the ills in, in our society. Um, and I would hope to leave with some idea of I don't know, policy, legislative, statewide, or local initiatives that we can start working towards. Hi, I'm Lynn Wild from Montpelier, Vermont. And uh, I'm here because I didn't want to miss what might be happening tonight. I know something's going to happen. I, just, <laughs> I wouldn't want to sleep through it at home. So uh, the best outcome for me, uh, uh, in addition to being connected to what's going to happen here tonight is that maybe five of you show up in Montpelier next week on Wednesday at the Montpelier Senior Activity Center for uh, Alan Savory's TED Talk and the Soil Carbon Cowboys film that we're going to discuss. Carl and I are going to be discussing this film with people and I'd love to have five at least of you there to help move that discussion along. So. Uh, just saying. In Montpelier at the Montpelier Senior Activity Center on Berry Street. And it's uh, on the uh, website at the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. I think it starts at 6. Jesse Scarlato, Montpelier. Uh, here because I want to be working on solutions and supporting others in working on solutions. Um, and an outcome I would like to see is uh, developing some plans for next steps that we can take. Hi, my name is Sabra Ewing. I live in Berkshire. Um, I'm an organic farmer, shepherd. Uh, we make hard cider and brandy. Um, what else am I supposed to say? <laughs> well, I, I, I am here because I have a vision. I really resonate with the idea of mycelium and social mycelium. And I see Vermont as this incredible place of, of um, social capital soil. And I would like to uh, bring children in on that um, and bring them to Vermont. And my outcome that I'd like to see happen would be for me to connect with others that resonate with that, and just even families, and also that maybe we could create a, a nugget of a curriculum so that when kids could go to organic farms and do composting and, 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 and learn about soil, um, that, they're, that we could create a, a curriculum um, that enables organic farmers and progressives um, to help kids learn about all of this. Birthday boy, you go first. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Seth Iskan. I'm the birthday boy. And um, um, I'm here to honestly, when I realized it was my birthday, I thought this is a great, great way to spend it. And I drove up from Boston to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really sorry I missed some of the other meetings. So. Um, I do have some visions of, of outcomes, but I don't know if it's for this meeting or if it's for the state, but just to say really quickly, I know Bonneda was here the other day. I thought it'd be cool to say something like, Vermont vows to be an erosion-free state. We're not gonna have any soil erosion in the state. Just making a statement like that, you know, creates a narrative. And I think this is the kind of group that, that could do something like that. Thank you. My name is Lisa McCrory. I'm an organic farmer, and I live in Bethel, Vermont. And why I'm here tonight is this is only the third of all the series that I've been able to make, and it was hard to miss the other ones, and I'm just excited to network 
I'm also feeling overwhelmed. You know, there's a lot of conversations, a lot of emails, a lot of discussions, a lot of events, and I got a farm to run. And, and so I just, I want to walk away from here feeling a little more inspired and focused and um, that I have a community that I can think about when I'm back there doing my shit. <laughs> get, getting shit done in the upper <laughs> I'm Jess, I live in Randolph Center. Um, one of the reasons I'm here is because I really like actually seeing people in the flesh rather than little pictures of them on the computer. And I like talking to them in person. And I've already accomplished that tonight. Um, and I guess something else I'll mention just in terms of local projects is my partner Camden and I have been working on Randolph Community Orchard, which is uh, um, which is, I guess, our contribution, what we have time to work on um, in this topic. Hi, Cam. Cam and Walters. I live up in Randolph Center. Like she said, we kind of have a, we have kind of a few projects going on. We've got a nonprofit that's starting an apple orchard or a general community orchard. We call them Stag. That kind of lifestyle. Um, also on the planning commission, so I'm involved in town politics and things like that. Um, just like coming here to hang out with people who come out for bail events. It's always a good discussion, a good time. And as far as I don't know, best outcome, I like to form connections with people um, that leads to direct action kind of work. Um, doing things physical, I mean a physical kind of you know, time of my life, so that's what I like to put all my energy and attention is in the building things. Mike Bald in Royalton. Um, I came this evening and to a couple of the past evenings because I enjoy good company. Um, not much of a talker, more of a doer. Uh, I just enjoy hearing what people have to say. Hopefully I learn from that. Um, the reason I've been coming to, the reason behind mo all of my activism and everything I do these days is um, I don't want the younger generations to see or feel or sense that we gave up on our challenges of the day, nor do I want them to see that we gave up on them. So that's why I'm here. My name is Kai Cochran. I live in West Hartford on a small farm. Uh, the reason that I'm here tonight and that I've come to all the other ones is because I think it's the what we've been discussing is the most important topic that anybody could discuss anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I wanted to be in on it. And the best outcome, I think, is for us to form a, a strong group that uh, is able to make what we have learned uh, uh, sound reasonable and sound good and, and teach other, pe other people. And I would like, uh, uh, it would be wonderful if, if our effort could combine with other efforts going on in this country and around the world to actually help us with this climate change. I'm uh, Matthew Mackey. I'm actually a non-Vermonter in the crowd. I live in Claremont, New Hampshire, right over the border. Uh, but we, we do share that Connecticut River uh, water <laughs> here, so we're, we're all in it together, even if you guys are upside down. Uh, <laughs> this is the first one of these series that I've been to, but I, I see a lot of familiar faces from the event at Lake Maury with Dee Dee uh, in Multigany last year. Um, uh, anybody that knows me or, or my colleague Jan knows that we come at this more from a water angle. Our group is called Voices of Water for Climate. We're, we're one of the four climate franchises. Uh, <laughs> what I'm hoping to find out here, to, what I'm hoping to get out of this tonight is to, to learn more, just like uh, many have uh, also said, so that I can also teach more, um, and to understand how best to fit in to help move the bar forward towards actual progress. Um, I, I think we're all so busy and there's a lot of different groups and a lot of different interests represented. If we understand each other a little bit better uh, and, and are all working towards it, I think we'll find ways to work together to move the bar forward. Tim, Corinne, outcomes, scaling, bridging, 
coordination, dissemination, application. I'm nominally retired. I think I've got plenty to do, but I, uh, I wouldn't be here if I weren't looking for a productive work. I am Sandy Gamuer. I'm from Copy Hill Co-Housing in Heartland. And um, I've come tonight just to really keep learning and um, so that I can keep learning how to apply these concepts and talk to other people about it. And I hope the best outcome for me would be that I feel momentum at the end of this meeting towards something. and that I feel hopeful. I have three gorgeous kids and I think a lot about their future. So this is a big part of that. Hi, Laurel Stevenson, also from Harlan. Um, I'm here because I, I think this group gets it that this is actually an opportunity that we face now to decentralize power, um, and I, I, this is the group of people I want to make this transition with because I skipped McKibben's talk tonight because I want to be with, with you guys instead with decentralized power, and we can all we can all figure out where we fit into that so we make our best contribution that we can. And I, I think this is a kind of a living organism that I think needs to grow throughout all of Vermont and beyond. I'm Kep Taylor, I'm from Williamstown. Um, I've come to almost all of these meetings and have found great inspiration. Um, I started just wondering about how soil worked. I wanted to try to make my garden work better and I find out that there's so much hope in the soil for the future of um, the planet. Um, and I think that the greatest outcome possible tonight is that everybody here feels empowered to take the energy that we all kind of gather here and then spread it. to get people out of their comfort zone and rethinking fundamentally how the world and American society works and their place within it and really overthrowing traditional paradigms of what you can and can't or should or shouldn't do. Hi, uh, Liz. I'm Jan Lambert from Charlestown and Hampshire, right across the river from Springfield, where I'm very active with the Springfield uh, Black River Action Team. Um, I'm a writer, journalist, network, networker, educator, um, co-founded Voices of Water for Climate with Matt over here. I've written um, several books and, and uh, run a uh, few different journals. Uh, I invite you all to sign up for our new Valley Water Journal newsletter. Um, also have several free handouts on the table. I hope you take a look at the before we leave. Um, so I was one of the speakers about cooling the planet with water. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how we can best be of service to this group. Um, I love um, I love seeing people in person, and somebody else mentioned just seeing people on the computer screen all the time. I spend way too much time on the computer. I love seeing people in person, and I just want to come away from this with a you know, new purpose of how I can fit into this wonderful group. Thanks. Hi. Hi. I'm Beth Champagne. I live in St. Johnsbury. I have three grandsons and a granddaughter growing up at Central Vermont. And they're probably the biggest reason I'm here, because I feel that 
everything I've been learning from Kat and Dee Dee and countless, countless others, including Jan, um, gives the, the very best chance for them and for all the other young people to get a life, to work for their own benefit and for other people's. And I want to report that at the great hub of my social life, namely Hunger Mountain Co-op, <laughs> I just yesterday met the RTCC, that's the Randolph Technical Career Center ag teacher who can't come on Wednesday nights, who is just gung-ho <coughs> about getting our principals into his program. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Caroline Gordon. I'm living in Cambridge right now, and um, as I'm originally from Germany, one of my main uh, goals to come here was to just gain uh, literacy in English on the issue, and of course also to be part of the social machine. And I agree that the best outcome probably would be that we take this motivation and inspiration that we gain here into our future actions. Marjorie Ryerson, I live in Randolph, and I'm here as a writer. I have been teaching writing classes to people in Montpelier. For the last three years, I was a professor of writing for many years, and they're tough topics, like the comparison of Trump and Hitler, or surviving rape and incest. And I've been talking to people all over the state, and I have been picking up huge amount of depression in people. My tree guy is depressed about working on trees anymore. He said we've lost the planet. And last night I went to hear Bill McKibben and David Zuckerman, whose friend and I talked about the fact that Vermont, Vermont changed the world when it came to civil unions and then gay marriage. And I said Vermont can do that again. I had a conversation with Chris this morning and he said, come to this meeting tonight. I hadn't been to any of them but I want to shape a class on finding hope. And it's a big topic. There are a lot of things that go in it, but that's what brought me here. So connection, I'm going to get a red card. Connection here. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Josie Carruthers. I live in the East Randall, and I have been to most of these, and I'm fascinated and entranced by the fact that I'm coming to a failed forum series in Randolph. I've been doing this for years. But this one is different. This one, not that the others weren't great, but some energy that took place in this room over and over again. It was, um, for me, an experience of, the, you know, the emotions have been allowed in this scene. Um, with people being uh, uh, deeply inspired. I have been deeply inspired by finding out all of this stuff about soil. So my dream tonight is uh, has been expressed over and over again. It's connectivity. It's the, uh, there's something special we're providing for each other in terms of morale and what we can do. And I have a great trust in all of us and what we're doing here. Thank you. I did this talk. Hi, I'm Megan Stacco. I'm on the Megan, come into the circle. Megan, come, come in our circle. Yeah, I'll come in. Take a chair. <laughs> Sorry, Here's I'm late. I don't work. Here's a chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are in a circle. What we do. Right now. <laughs> when you sit back, just wait. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm on the board of Royal Vermont and on um, the board of the Center for Grassroots Organizing, and I'm here to meet you all and figure out how we can work together. Ooh. All right. Elizabeth? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Siler from Burlington. Um, also, sorry I was late. Um, I'm, I'm here because I'm a backyard gardener, have a little plot of land in the New York end of Burlington that I want to make as carbon sinking as possible. I um, want to do the best I can with my little turf, and I'd like to influence my neighbors. 
and their neighbors. And um, so I'm here to see how I can contribute and how I can take this information and start peppering it through the, my community, just to start with my own <coughs> community. And Liz also wrote an article in seven days about. Oh, um, wow. yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really like seven days as a writer yeah. and really good article. proofreader, and and did that story on cat because I think it's quite the work. Mm -hmm. so, great. Did we miss anybody? Jesse. Jesse. And Chris. Yeah, I, I saw you sit, but I didn't look at it. I'm Jesse Martin. I'm an amateur mycologist and ecologist and forager. I'm trying to be also a perennial gardener. Um, I come to these meetings just because it's extremely rare for me to be able to connect with people that give a shit um, <laughs> and care deeply. And I care deeply. Instead, I just want to connect with you all and work with you all. And that's where I think the most power is. There was homework? Just Chris. Chris. Oh, oh, Chris. oh, oh you're like Chris Hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Hope. Yeah, that's it. Uh -oh. I'm, I'm worried about the mic. How are you doing, Beth? Right? You're good. You're good. Yeah. She can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try without. Um, uh, so, uh, my name is Chris Wood. I live in Tunbridge. I work at Bale. Um, and the reason that I'm here for tonight is because I've been organizing the series. It would be a little hard for Kat. Maybe she could probably do, she has done 95% of this, and I've just tagged along. But, um, and the reason that I'm here tonight is to, um, uh, it, it, it's for expand, it's, I sort of picture this group uh, sort of in the systems point of view that I sort of live in. Is here's the early adopters. You know, here, you are the early adopters. And there's a huge message that needs to go out from here. Um, and so I am all interested. <laughs> Hey, hey, where's that yellow card? Yeah. <laughs> Red card, I'm done. <laughs> okay, we we saved time. Can I say one thing before we yes. turn to the next thing? Um, I just would like people to think about who's not. Um, what groups, what people, uh, it's an interesting question, and I, and I, and there, there's, I don't, I don't know exactly where all of you fall, but my sense is that this is um, most people here are probably on the liberal to progressive end of things, just from hearing the go around, and and this is an issue that that in my experience traveling around the country, that everybody can and does care about if it's framed in the right way. Uh, so, so to, to to think about as we go through some of these groups, how do we think in that way so that? We, and I know that is on a couple of these topics, but I want to kind of put that front and center. Is how do we how do we make this a space that's that is um, as compelling for everyone? Because this it I mean this matters to everybody, and and we actually need everybody. On board. So, how do we make this not an us versus them, or a, or a kind of a fringe, you know, that's going to change the world from the fringe? But how do we make this something that that is really, really um, inviting and compelling and interesting? And I love Seth. I love making Vermont an erosion, you know, erosion-free state. Like that kind that's, of that's language. Bold. That kind of language is the kind of language that actually is inclusive. Yeah. So let me think of that. Um, OK, so our next job, I'm going to just review the agenda with you so you have a good idea of what's happening. Every, did everyone here get to choose your top three groups? Uh-oh, shoot me. Well, some people came in. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, well, I guess I'm going to, for time's sake, I think I'm going to ask you to just join the group that you're most interested in. But so what we did, we tried to have everybody during the first half an hour make three dots, um, one per thing that you're most interested. We have nine topics. Those topics are connectivity, local government and agencies, policy and legislation, writers, arts and theater, water catchers, soil sponge and compost, consumerism, uh, citizen science. The marks that we got here, um, it looks to me like, unsurprisingly, we have a lot of people interested in soil, soil sponge and compost. Um, so it looks to me like we have six groups. Our facilitators could uh, help me agree on that. So, I think. So maybe there's some people who came in late who are interested in the. Right. The Citizen system. science, the, the two that got the lowest votes, and nothing is getting voted out. There's no out. It's just what are we focusing on now? There's also huge lists that didn't make it on here. And these were, by the way, created exclusively from the notes from six series that Lauren took lots of notes on. And so we have d distilled those notes and have turned that into nine topics. It, was, and it took a lot of, of time to do that. Um, so the two that didn't get votes were citizen science, which are land listening, collect storm damage data, lots of opportunities. Maybe it wasn't super clear. That could also easily go into soil. The other one was arts and theater which also, so that only got three votes, but it could easily group into writers. So I was thinking arts, theater, and writing kind of in one. So I see, I see water catchers, I see arts, theater, and writing, I see connectivity, I see local and policy, like local government and policy could easily be one, and that makes 11. Uh, so that's four groups, soil is a fifth one, consumerism, is the sixth one. So that's what I see as our primary topics. So what I'd like to do is just appoint groups. It doesn't matter what you did on these papers. I'm gonna say, if you want to, I'll point in a minute where to go, but I'm gonna tell you where to go to, to join your group. One of our facilitators, we have a team of facilitators who's gonna come and help facilitate your group. It could be that the soil group is too big. Maybe 13 people is too big and it's not a small enough discussion group. Maybe you split into two and we provide a facilitator for that second group. We're going to break for an hour in these groups. For 40 minutes, we're going to break into discussion. We have some focused questions to help you facilitate or get that discussion going, um, some things to consider. We'd love it if you come out of there with a next step. But it's also difficult to plan things like that in just a half an hour. So just do the best you can. I would love it if we all think boldly, like maybe something we haven't done before, or how can we step up what we're already doing, or how can, can we, we connect what we are already doing to someone else who's doing something similar, and then continue that connection. Um, I think. As a group, we will also stay connected, but I also see the possibility of working groups coming out of these, which could end up being much like 350 has nodes, or perhaps we get into sociocracy circles in the future. If you might not know what sociocracy is, but if you hang around long enough, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll do a training on that. Um, so I don't know what the future is going to look like with our working groups. That's for all of us to figure out together. To, to, we're smarter together. Um, we're actually brilliant together. Um, I don't think there's anything we can't do together. And the people in this room are all amazing. You all inspire me. So I think we're gonna we're gonna really have some good outcomes. The second part of that hour, you're gonna have 20 minutes to figure out how you're gonna report back to the group. And I would like you to create a skit. <laughs> This is for you, Kai. <laughs> a skit or a commercial or a miming, you know, some something creative. Ideally, it has some body movement. It can involve everyone in your group, or maybe you just have a few actors in the group. Maybe you don't want to do body movement, you want to do something else. I'm not telling you what to do, but you're going to have two minutes to report out. And so I encourage you to do that creatively. You'll report out in a skit, and then also let us know as a part of your report out, did you, 
Is there a next step from your group? All of this is written down. You don't need to remember it, and your facilitator knows all of this stuff. At 8.30, that'll be an hour in your groups. At 8.30, we're going to do performances. And I have a couple of prizes. But I'm not going to tell you who gets them. Because <laughs> I'm still deciding. <laughs> um, so, and then at 8.30 we do performances, and that could be how we end the night, but it might be nice to also have like a one word go around, or we, you know, we want to keep the energy high at the end of the night. We all want to leave feeling inspired. We will continue to connect afterwards, and tomorrow I'm going to send you all an email with a survey that is now working. So if you've ever tried to fill out our survey, it was actually broken, so you couldn't. <laughs> so sorry if you tried. Um, so that's going to happen tomorrow. So that, that'll be the start of our next connection. Um, any questions about the agenda or the groups? OK. Pat, did you say that people could move if they Yes. Yeah, so when you're in a group, say you just really can't decide. You do want, want to do water or soil. <laughs> you can't decide. Um, about 15 minutes in, we're going to call out. Like, we're halfway. If you want to jump to another group, do so. Um, and at any point, if you want to flow out of a group and into another one, you should feel welcome to do that, too. You're not locked in. But the, the more you can stay with your group, the probably the better outcome from the group. But So that's up to you. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. So connectivity. Henry, would you lead our connectivity group?